the rise of different multimodal AI systems have created so many possibilities that your imagination is the only limit of what you can create with AI today. Let me actually show you a quick demo of what I have created as part of this project. I will share my screen and then I'll let you okay. know what I need you to change in the UI. Please help me change that. I'm ready. Please share your screen and let me know what changes you would like to make to the UI. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. So if you can follow the cursor here in the middle between the head in this live changer app and the next text, I want a button called change background. I understand. You want a button labeled change background placed between the live changer app heading and the ready for all modifications text. Is that correct? I will add a change background button in the specified location. I have added the button. What I can see is that after you have changed it, the app entire background it has split. Can you please fix it so that the background you created should be through the entire screen? I see the split background. I will modify the CSS to make the background cover the entire screen. I've updated the sure CSS. CSS or, I'm not sure what you're saying CSS, but please fix this. I, I don't see this is uh, working properly. I understand. I do see it. It appears the background is still split, but okay. only covering a portion okay, of the left side. What I want you to do is uh, whenever I click change background, I want you to change the background of the page to some different gradient colors. I understand. You click, click the change background button. You want the background to change to different gradient colors. I will update the code to implement this functionality. I've modified the code. Now clicking the change background button will change the background to a random gradient. Gradient. Do you see? This looks so cool, right? Now let's add some um, animations there. Thank you for that. Now what I want you to do is add some animations to this live changer app sections to make it look really uh, intuitive and production ready. I understand. You'd like to add animations to the Live Changer app to make it more intuitive and production ready. I will proceed to add some animations. I've added fade in animations to the heading, button, and paragraph elements, as well as a transition to the background you, change. Let me know if there is anything else you can would you like make to sure change. The animation is loop animation for the header text. I understand. So nice. Thank you. If you are new to the multimodal AI space, that demo would have probably blown your mind. However, if you have been following this trend of AI and you have been seeing how the multimodal AI have been evolving over the past few months, then that demo would have probably feels a bit basic, isn't it? Now, I agree that was really a basic use case and it's not something really fascinating and there is already a lot of other ai tools to create ui projects much much better than what i have done but that was not the intention of this video the intention of the video is to show you with multimodal ai the number of use cases that you can create is really limitless as i said your imagination is only the limit of what you can do with multimodal AI. And I'm just going to quickly show you what I have done as part of this project, the process or the end-to-end -end architecture so that you can kind of replicate that and use it your own use cases or whatever you want to build. And this use case is very, very simple. I have created two tools to just get that particular demo working. And I'm going to show you the architecture or design first, the very simple design. And then I'm going to actually take you through the code base to show you what exact changes I have done. Yeah, by this time, you had probably understood that I was using Google Gemini to achieve this. So it was completely free to do that. Uh, but one of the issue that I faced during the demo and with many of the multimodal use cases is 
the voice so sometimes the voice streaming is slow or it is kind of getting cut in the middle and that sometimes is due to the noise that i have seen with many other implementation like even in the ultravox implementation i have seen same thing a lot of the time when you mute the mic or a lot of the time when you use headphone that actually resolves it but let's actually get into the code topic so what i have done is i have downloaded the google gemini ai playground project and i have covered about this google playground project in much more detail how the playground is working and how you can improve that in this video so if you go to this video how google gemini 2.0 works or, or this video you will be having a complete understanding of how this uh, front end uh, actually works and what changes you need to make to make it working for your use cases and also in that video i told you that this is not production standard code and i also told you the reason so please go through the code i'm not going to go through that again what i instead want to show you is what i'm doing here so what i have done in the google gemini ai playground code i have modified that altair.tsx code and added two additional tool to actually get the code of another react project or front-end project which you saw in the demo is being changing and in that react project whatever code files are there so there are two tools one is fetch code so fetch code will actually get all the codes but because this is a react code the AI playground is a react front-end code so there is a browser security restrictions that you cannot access the uh, file system so i could have used mcp so i have already covered about mcp as well in another video here how you can use Google Gemini or similar uh, playground and integrate with MCP servers. Uh, so make sure you watch that video. But in this case, I haven't used MCP because that will make it even more complicated. So instead of that, I just created a Node.js Express backend. And that backend is basically fetching the code. And also when there is an update to the code as the Gemini AI is, Gemini AI is producing, it will update the code. That is it. That is exactly what the code is doing. So whenever I'm giving instructions in the demo, when I was showing uh, in a multimodal AI space by sharing my screen, uh, Gemini was kind of seeing my screen and it is able to find out what it needs to change because I'm pointing where to change it. And then it is fetching the code, the latest code, and then it is updating the code. And again, it is called doing the tool called through the backend and again updating the code and because it's a react code uh, it is reacting immediately so you are able to see the changes immediately that is it what is happening really it's not any magic what i want to say now i'm going to quickly show you the code uh, because again it's not going to take a lot of time so what is happening is i have updated the altair.tsx as i've said and i created um, two tools one is this modify code tools and then there is a fetch code tools so the, the in both the cases you see the schema here uh, so the schema is basically just need the absolute path of the file to fetch and the code modification is again needs the path of the uh, file that needs to be modified you do not need anything else so where it will get the file is very simple when i start the google gemini ai api playground in the chat window, I have provided the path of the JSX file, uh, which is this one. So this is the JSX file, which it is updating. So I have just copied the path and provided the path at the start. I'll show you in a while how you can do that. And then here I have set the API base URL, which is localhost 3001. Uh, that is the basically the Node.js backend server that I have created and when it is calling this backend so basically as part of the modify code method it's using code modification declaration function so if you go to the code modification declaration case which is this one it's calling the update file content function so if you see the update file content function it's calling the api base url which is the backend server url slash file and that's it and then it's just updating the content of the file as AI have created. Similarly, for get method, this, this one, which is the fetch code method. So that is fetch code declaration. So if you go to fetch code declaration here in the, the switch case, 
it's basically calling the fetch file content method again if you go to the fetch file content method which is here again it's calling the api based url but here it is it's a get request so it is uh, giving the path parameter there and it's providing the path url again the path url we have provided as when we have started the conversation and that is it so in the server.ts which is the backend server we have created an express server here which is running on 3001 port and basically there are two endpoints one is get endpoints slash api file and once the file file path is provided it is basically using the fs module which is the file system module and kind of fetching the path so you need to provide the absolute path here so that's what we are doing it's just using the parent directory if the directory exists it's just loading the file using the fs promise library that's it it is doing and similarly when the modification is there it's basically just updating the file as you can see with this write file function it's updating the jsx file and that's all really so if as part of the changes ai thinks that it needs to update the css file basically uh, gemini is intelligent enough to know that the css file will be on the same path and it is updating it but at times i have seen that it sometimes updates on the wrong path and that is where you would have seen that error that has appeared at the start and if you ask it it can immediately fix it now again as i said this was very basic example it's not something which is uh, using which you can create really awesome uh, ui or something but you can improve this and i'm sure this is going to be the future of ai or rather the multimodal ai systems where you just can do collaboration with ai system live using multimodal use cases or using multimodal form and it will def it will actually help you do stuff that you want to do it could be trainings it could be things that you are learning from this video you will probably not need me anymore in future uh, for any of the use cases because with multimodal ai all these things are actually possible and your imagination is what will actually drive what you will create with multimodal ai so please let me know if you like the video and and what you are keen to build with this kind of multimodal ai system at your fingertips now now actually let me quickly show you how i have run the demo this code will be available to you anyway for free so just click the link in the description and get the code it will be absolutely free uh, again you will be able to browse all the other projects that i have created as part of this channel over the past one year so feel free to check those out there will be a lot of valuable information hopefully for you let me quickly go back and show you so first what you need to do is clone this repository and you will see this server folder so all you need to do is just go inside the project and run node server dist server.js as you run it this will start the server on 3001 port and then you come to the front end and before you update the front end you have to update the uh, react gemini api ui here so please replace with your api just go to google ai studio and update it here and once you are done just come to the root directory of the project and just do npm install if this is the first time you are downloading the project your node modules will not be installed so please make sure you install it and once you install it just run npm start and before you even start it uh, if you have any other react project just like i have this one so i'm also going to uh, keep this uh, react project as part of the link that you will download if you want to test it all you will just do here is npm run dev so this will start the react project and this is the react project at the start as it was and whenever i make some changes here for example if i updated app this will be updated immediately right so that's how it works so that's what we are doing and all we, you will do is just copy the file path so wherever you will have this file really just copy that and then if you do npm start and your server will be started like the gemini AI, like the gemini api playground will be started and just click here can you hear me yes i can hear you so now it is talking so what you have to do is just paste the path here and just uh, like hit enter did you get the path to the file? Yes, I have the path to the file. That's great. Um, I'm going to share my screen and you need to help me out improve the app, please. I'm ready. 
Please share your screen and I'll do my best to help you improve the app. Can you see my screen and the app? Yes, I can see your screen and the app. It says can live change the background of this app to a gradient color and I introduce a button to change the background every time I click the button. I will change the background of the app to a gradient color and introduce a button to change the background every time you click it. I'll start by fetching the code. I have That's changed the back working, but I'm, I think what you have done is uh, it's just working part of the screen. So if you can see my screen, uh, it's not I see the entire screen. So please fix it. I understand. I will modify the code to make the background gradient cover the entire screen. I've modified the code to make the gradient cover the entire So as you can see, this is as easy as that. So this is really, really cool. And this was something I created in one hour. So you can see that with AI, how fast you can develop stuff if you have some crazy idea. But let me know what you think of this type of project also join the community if you can and please take the membership if you can because that will really really help the channel to grow um, and i'll be able to create this kind of valuable content for you in the coming future that's all really as part of this video and i am actually trying to create a SaaS as part of the pre-launch course that i have already discussed in this channel many times before so if you are someone who wants to know how to create production standard SaaS application and you want to know the end-to-end -end process, you can join the course with other SaaS entrepreneur member who are already in the course and we are having weekly catch-ups every Sunday where different business owners or software developers are coming up with their own idea, with their own issues and we discuss everything in our weekly call as, as well as I share whatever I am doing as part of the SaaS development. And this is really the perfect time that you can join because I'm probably going to close the membership for that course because with the course running on, I'm really not able to focus much onto the SaaS development. So I'll probably close down the access to the course in coming days. So if you can take the course and join us um, so we can have a really good community where we can discuss different use cases and we can discuss different tech challenges. That's really as part of this video, there are some more interesting videos that are coming up. I already have four or five projects running at the moment in parallel. So I'm hopefully going to bring more such videos on multimodal use cases in this channel. So I will really hope to see you on to the next one. So until then, please take care and peace out. Bye.